Hey everybody, this is Mr. Schultz. Um, this is the first set of notes that we're going to go over. I'm going to uh, put these videos up. Um, the notes will also be posted on Canvas, but I'll also do a video every time. So I promise I won't make you look at me too long. I'll shrink myself down to a very small size and we will get started on Forensic Science. So Forensic Science 1, again, Mr. Schultz, obviously you know the year. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the notes. Um, the notes will be set up the same way every single time. So the first thing you'll always see is you'll see the forensic science standards that we're going to cover for this set of notes. In this case, it's 1.1.1, define forensic science. And then the next one is identify the major disciplines it encompasses. Here is your first assignment. Okay. Uh, and I will, there's another spot for this on the module where you submit it at. It also has the rubric and everything kind of listed on it as well. So you need to write a 500 word paragraph, one paragraph outlining a forensic science discipline that you're interested in. You're going to see a bunch of these today um, as we go through the notes. You're more than welcome to choose one of those or you can um, talk to me if you have another idea of a forensic discipline that you're interested in that isn't listed. You're more than welcome to do it as long as it meets the criteria. Keep a copy of this assignment. When you submit it, keep it. Okay, I want you to hang on to a copy um, so that you can use it at a later date. We're going to do some more stuff with this later on. So let's get started. First thing is first. What is forensic science? What are we talking about? It's not a separate discipline by itself. Forensic science is the application of scientific principles and technology to the legal process. It involves essentially um, the characterization and examination of different types of evidence. It encompasses all the other sciences, physics, chemistry, biology, you name it, as well as engineering and technology. So all the traditional sciences are involved and then we apply it to the legal process. So forensic science isn't necessarily a separate, separate scientific discipline. It's um, using all the different scientific disciplines in the legal process to look at evidence, to try to solve cases, to um, use this evidence in, in courtroom proceedings. Most operational forensic science laboratories classify their sections according to the type of testing performed. So how are these scientific labs classified? Well, you have different categories, different um, divisions within a, a forensic laboratory. You have uh, a group of scientists that work on specifically controlled substances. You have serology, you have DNA, you have people that work in trace chemistry, um, firearms, tool marks, question documents, latent prints, toxicology. These are generally the major categories that you see in forensic science. So each one of these controlled substances, serology, DNA, uh, trace chemistry, firearms, tool marks, question documents, latent prints, and toxicology are kind of all separate disciplines. So we're going to look at a few of these and then you can choose one of these maybe for your paragraph that you're going to do later on. <clears throat> so how are forensic science labs classified? Continue. These classifications may reflect the organization of the laboratory. For example, the examination of tool marks is often associated with firearms. So here you have in this top picture looking at the back of a shell casing and you can see the firing pin marks right here the little line that's going down the middle here divides the two. This is done on a comparison microscope. So you can do a comparison of these. Similarly, if you look at tool marks, there's a little line coming down here. These are two striations made at a um, uh, from a tool and you can see or they can line these up using a comparison microscope to see if these striation marks match in any way. So because those two um, approaches are similar they usually lump those two divisions together. You have firearms and tool marks are, are sometimes uh, put in the same category or same division of a particular forensic science lab. Forensic evidence can be classified in a number of ways. And we're going to ha have a whole nother unit that's just going to focus on 
um, different types of evidence. And uh, we'll spend a lot of time as we go through the rest of the year, especially the second semester, looking at the different types of evidence and how we collect it, how we analyze it, and so on. Um, but for now, we're going to keep it really simple, right? So a couple of ways we can classify this is either associative or inceptive. So if it's associative in nature, it's linking a person, a place, or an object. This comes from the well-known, and you're going to learn about this more and more, um, Lacard's exchange principle. And it simply states, every contact leaves a trace. So in other words, if a person comes in um, and, uh, let's say, touches a glass of water, well, he's left a fingerprint behind. That fingerprint can be associated to a person, and it can link that person to where he left the print. So associative evidence may be subdivided. You could have fingerprints. You could have DNA. Um, those are all associative in nature. However, much of the evidence that comes to a typical crime laboratory is not associative. It's actually inceptive. And what this means is that we're just seeing if a crime have, has occurred at all. So this could address uh, the issue of whether an offense occurred. A good example of this is controlled substances. Hey, um, did that uh, little bag of questionable substance, was that um, uh, drugs? Was that cocaine? So we can do a test, okay? We can do a test in the laboratory and definitively tell if something is um, cocaine or if a person was pulled over drinking and driving, they can do alcohol testing, they can do a blood test and de determine if he was over the legal limit and see if an actual crime um, occurred. It's not associating anything, it's basically just seeing did something, you know, did a, a crime take place. When dealing with associative evidence, we also need to consider the results. Um, here there is a link with the falsification approach to basic science, so you may have a test that produces evidence to exclude an association. Um, that DNA uh, from that blood or that sperm was different from the sus suspect, so it doesn't match. So it's not associating that person with a particular um, location, place, or, or object. Okay. All right, let's look at some of these subcategories, some of these different divisions that we can look at or specializations in forensic science. So the first one we'll look at is what is forensic medicine? Arguably, the earliest documented forensic specialty is forensic medicine. Um, sometimes it's considered now a s separate discipline to forensic science. It's also called legal medicine or medical jurisprudence. And it's basically the application of medicine and medical science to the legal process. Um, being able to look at somebody and based on the condition of their hyoid bone, for example, we can tell if they were strangled if it was a violent crime, or if they uh, died from a hanging. Okay? Those are examples of forensic medicine, uh, determining manner of death, cause of death, those type of things. Another subdivision is forensic toxicology. Advances in chemistry at the end of the 18th century paved the way for the development of something called toxicology. This is closely related to forensic medicine. Forensic toxicology focuses on the identification and quantification of toxic substances in bodily fluids, tissues. Um, so what they can do is they can take, again, a lot of times they're working maybe with a body. This person was found dead. They can do a toxicology report and find out that this guy was, um, you know, had lethal amounts of a toxic substance, maybe a drug. So we could find out that the person OD'd on a particular drug. Forensic odontology. Forensic odontology uses dental records. Usually this is used to help in human identification. They find a body, they're not sure who it is. Um, they sometimes can look at dental records and find out um, a person's ID. It's also used occasionally with bite mark analysis. Um, and that can be done as well. So what is forensic anthropology? Another one of my favorite sub-disciplines. I, I love forensic anthropology. Um, it's also used in personal identification. A lot of times people in this discipline can associate the uh, identification of skeletal remains um, to determine gender or race or the stature, how tall the person might have been. 
and you can use this to maybe um, take skeletal remains and find or link it to a particular missing person. Fingerprint analysis. One of the most widely used ways of identifying people is the use of fingerprints. Um, the F FBI uh, maintains something called APHIS, the Automated Fingerprint Identification System, and it's still used, right? People get fingerprinted to work for the school district. I've been fingerprinted. They run it through APHIS and make sure I don't have any um, outstanding um, warrants for my arrest because I committed a felony in some other state. Um, so they, they basically can run the fingerprints found at a crime scene, crime scene through APHIS um, and maybe get a possible identification of, of a suspect. So that's fingerprinting. Um, one of the um, interesting things is there's lots of different techniques of um, viewing latent prints, right? Every, everywhere from the simple fingerprint dusting to using stuff called uh, uh, ninhydrin um, to using iodine fuming or cyanoacrylate fuming. So there's all different kinds of ways, and we're going to learn about those later on. Criminalistics. Uh, sometimes criminalistics is used as a synonym for forensic science. They'll use them kind of in conjunction how, um, with each other. However, criminalistics is usually considered to include all the areas of trace evidence, looking at soil, hairs, fibers, blood, bodily fluids, saliva, sweat, um, vitreous human. They can also look at accelerants that are used in arson or uh, stuff that was used in explosives. They can kind of identify some of the chemicals that were involved, drug identification. All of those can be kind of lumped together into criminalistics. Then you have ballistics and firearm um, identification. This is a specialization that incorporates firearm identification, comparison of bullet markings, rifling, the identification of projectiles, cartridge uh, and shell casings, and trying to determine if a bullet or trajectory and damage, they can do all kinds of stuff, right? They can look at um, a shell casing and determine um, if it came from a specific gun that was in possession of uh, a suspect. You have question document examination. In question document examination, it entails comparison and interpretation of handwriting. It can also look at the materials generated from typing, printing, facsimiles, photocopying, um, the analysis of aging of paper and inks. Uh, we'll, we uh, sometimes do a lab in Forensics 2 where we do chromatography labs on different types of inks to see if we can figure out which pen created which um, ink mark and so on. Soil examination, uh, looking at soil, one of the major contributors is here's that guy again, Edmund Lacard, the Lacard exchange principle. In 1929 he made the observation that it was almost impossible for anyone to participate in any activity without removing some soil, either on their person or on a tool or on their clothes or in a vehicle. Um, if you're going somewhere, usually you're carrying away a little bit of uh, dust particles or soil or something with you. Hair examination, looking at different types of uh, classifications of hair, even, even down to whether it's a human or an animal. There's been cases that have been solved based on an animal hair found um, in a trunk of a car from a suspect that matches the dog that a victim owned. Um, so they, they, they can use this for both animals and human hair examination. DNA profiling, this is, um, is basically evolved from classical serology, looking at blood. And now we're getting really good. This is a, a modern day technique that has really revolutionized personal identification in forensic science. Um, if you leave DNA behind at a scene, there's going to be a high, high chance that you're going to get caught. And it's really difficult not to leave DNA at the scene. They're even getting to the point where now they have something called touch DNA. Um, you don't even have to leave a hair or blood at the scene. Um, sometimes they can pick it up from objects that you just come into contact with. Um, they're getting that precise with it. And we'll look at that in a lot of detail in Forensics 2 as well. There's other disciplines out there, uh, forensic botany, forensic entomology, another favorite of mine, looking at insects to determine post-mortem interval and things like that, uh, forensic pathology, um, looking at fibers, different types of fibers from clothing or, or um, you know, carpets and rugs and that type of stuff, glass analysis, uh, paint analysis, um, 
there's, there's tons, right? This is obviously not a comprehensive list. There's lots of other experts that can be called in to help with the, the analysis of different types of physical evidence. Um, but this is a good list to maybe get you started on your project. So if you see one of these that you're interested in exploring, choose one. Let me know what you're going to choose. If, if you have uh, any others that you're interested in that you didn't see here, send me an email or talk to me the next time we meet during one of the live sessions, and uh, I'll let you know if that's, that's allowable or if that's an actual discipline that's out there. Um, so hopefully uh, this was a good start to our first video. And uh, I look forward to seeing what, what uh, sub-disciplines of forensic science that you're going to be interested in and you're going to explore. Yeah.